There we are. Oh, there we go. Okay, just a second. Okay. All right, there you go. Yeah, uh, as I was saying, there is a track meet in Ontario. I know a few people are missing for, and um, um, other than that, there are a few other op options. Most of us don't have too many options, and that's why we're here. Because what else are you going to do? You know, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> if we did this on a normal year and a normal time, we'd probably have trouble getting thirty people together. But given the uh, circumstances, um, we're certainly glad to see uh, some familiar faces pieces and uh, get a chance to to talk. I'm not looking to do anything too formal. Uh, we do have um, an agenda and some slides to follow. But uh, if you have anything to ask, say, or whatever, we're willing to do that because I think the major purpose um, is to keep us going. And uh, you can see here on uh, Jill's slide, the uh, uh, three options that we have for developing the track referee and building uh, practices and professional development and all those nice terms. But bottom line is we need to, we have uh, old friendships and we have lots in common and we want to keep in touch with people. And that's probably the thing that most people have missed over the last year. So, so if you have something to say, feel free to interrupt at any time. And as long as there's no um, barking dogs in the background or whatever, we won't uh, mute everybody, but uh, you can mute yourself if you're in the midst of doing something else that might interrupt. Okay, next slide, Joe. Okay, Peter. Yeah, perfect. So first of all, we're obviously all officials and uh, we all know the, the role of the official and that's our basis. And then we're <clears throat> looking especially at being um, track referees and that uh, requires a little bit more than the average official. All right. Good. I'm not going to read these out. Everybody's <clears throat> aware of this, so I will just click through some of these, just as reminders of what we uh, we have. Mm -hmm. Right. So just tell me, uh, Peter, if you want me to show the next slide. Uh, okay, next slide. next slide, I think. Okay, this one is easy, eh? Oh, yeah, that's, that's me right. running. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So I guess everybody is agree with, uh, with this. We, we have um, a really good history of referees in Canada and um, several of us <clears throat> have worked with some of the best over the years, <clears throat> excuse me, and, but um, you know with people like um, Ken Porter and Leroy Washburn and um, you know George Arnold for me and Lane Lake and Alice who was kind enough to join us even though uh, she's even older than me I think so that's <laughs> Careful. Sorry, <laughs> but those are the people that inspired me and and were um, instrumental in, in me moving along, and um, they all have these characteristics, and that's <clears throat> Peter. I'm just wondering on this one whether or not there's a relationship to video referee and start referee, or are we going to talk about that a little bit later? We are. We. <clears throat> I, mean, I don't think we have anything um, with the video referee. <clears throat> we do have. Uh, excuse me. My throat's uh, <clears> throat> losing me here. 
Um, we do have mention of uh, um, call room referee and uh, track re or um, start referee. <clears throat> And um, the, the reason being, <clears throat> of course, that, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to mute myself for a minute here. While he's gone, hi, Cecile. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Oh, fine, yourself. Good. Yeah, busy, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not what track events, I guess, eh? No, or travel. No. no. <laughs> We're starting at that, well, in about a week for the, with the trials and then it goes uh, every weekend. Good. Thanks, Alice, for carrying me there for a minute or so. No problem. Yeah, as I was saying, the um, call room and start referees are significant to all of us, even if you don't aspire to do that at a national level, because at any provincial championship or a smaller meet, we're pressed into those positions. As a track referee, you're covering those positions when there's no call room referee or no start referee officially named. And usually at most of our meets, we have two referees and we tend to just alternate day to day or session to session as to which position we're, we're using. And some of us will be at start, the next day we're at the, uh, the finish line and acting as chief referee and the assistant acts as start referee, et cetera. And whatever system you do, you're going to have to be able to, uh, to comply and, and know exactly what's expected of, of the start referee and, and the call room referee. Although in many of our smaller meets, of course, we don't even have a call room. So there again, the opportunities for experience are pretty limited. Uh, Peter Ron Baudin, uh speaking from Saskatoon, and I'm Wondering on this list that you had, that you have now back again, um, where our uh, engagement with coaches comes in? Um, well, you're engaged with coaches, athletes, like the list would be pretty long. So we didn't list all the people we are engaged with. But, you know, we're mentioning some of those things later in our, our duties, but obviously you're dealing with coaches, you're dealing with athletes, you're dealing with other officials, you're dealing with um, media, security. There's all sorts of groups that you could be dealing with. So it well, comes under the head of that, good uh, communicator. The list is pretty long. But I'm yeah. also thinking that that could uh, fall under confident, decisive, and composed. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. good communicator. Yes. Yeah. Yep. If you don't have those skills and you don't react well when there's controversy and pressure, then you probably shouldn't be aspiring to be a referee. And, and you know, some of the people I mentioned previously were, were people that were very good at that. You know, they react to the situation, um, deal with it firmly and fairly, but without getting particularly emotional. And we do have some people that are, you know, graded referees that probably are in a little bit over their heads at some situations. And I've seen situations where a referee has been crying on the, you know, mm. because there's somebody yelling at them and that kind of thing. And that probably isn't someone you want at a, at a high level meet because there's stuff coming at you in all directions and the times are changing. Those of you who've done big meets in the last five years or so realize that we're now into the era of social media and big screens and people watching the event on their phones and the ability to protest on things that were never ever there 10 years ago because now they can see the event over and over again while they sit in the stands looking at a, a replay or a, a video and, and that changes your whole concept of how you're going to deal with that situation pressure pressure absolutely yeah. okay jill next slide yeah. a summary of some of the things we're going to look at we may not get through the whole thing tonight and i don't have any um 
intention of trying to push to get through. It's not a clinic. Uh, we're not trying to cover anything. We want to, you know, listen to people and, and discuss stuff and answer questions and come up with some <coughs> other ideas on things that we can do and whatever. And um, we can meet as many times as we like, as often as we like, and um, continue on. But uh, we did have a bit of an agenda so that we're not just going to be socializing the whole time. So. <laughs> right. All right, next. <coughs> we'll quickly go through some of the things that are mentioned in the rule book with respect to referees. And um, we all know these, so we're not gonna spend a lot of time unless there's a question. Um, discussing these at this point, but I'm sure they'll come up later. Remember the assistant track re referee is basically a, a track referee. And most times the assistant is the chief at times because the, the, the head track referee is off doing something. So the assistant's now in charge. So you can't kind of be sort of a referee, oh, I'm going to be the assistant and not do anything. You're going to end up doing something. Mm. Okay, next. The assistant referee uh, very often, uh, where you are, Peter, act as a start referee? Yes. Yeah, quite often. <laughs> And we, I think a lot of times yeah. we do it as, as co-referees almost more than chief and assistant. We're both doing the same and we're in communication by radio or, you know, early all the time because you're working equally and you're switching positions. And if um, the referee at the finish line is, is dealing with a, a protest perhaps and has to go and check results or whatever, then the assistant who was at the start line may have to go to the finish line and sort that out or um, stay at the start line so he can cover the start and have the chief umpire bring any reports to that person at the start line. If you want to make sure you're covering the start, especially in something like a, a hundred or a hurdles. Here's our reference to start reference. <laughs> and given we have this new designation, you know, new in the last what, 10 years or so, it's relevant that referees in the future have to have more experience as a starter than those in the past. I think Ian Gordon is somewhere there and he'll be sitting there chuckling. Yeah. It, it's interesting when you talk to people like um, Ian and um, who else have I spoken to? Um, but th they're mentioned that as a start referee, the most qualification that's required is probably the experience that they've gained as a referee, as opposed to the experience they gained as a starter. And it's, you're dealing not so much with the start, but you're dealing again with people. You're communicating, you're trying to calm things down. And not every starter is, is prone to do that as well as others. Some are very commanding in their role, but when they go to the other side of the fence to be a referee, they're not as um, fair and whatever, they see it as a starter. And then it's a little more black and white. And I think as referees, we have to look at all sides of the thing from the coach's side, the athlete side and the, the starter side. And when in doubt, you basically are going to look at being sure that it's fair for the athletes. And, uh, I think, Peter, it's important. It, it's, a, it's important that a start referee knows how to referee. Uh, exactly. He certainly has to have knowledge of the start, but I think for me, it's more important that he knows how to referee because he's making those kind of decisions. 
Uh, he has to have a founding in starting, but I think it's important that he knows how to referee. I exactly. agree, Dennis. I agree, Dennis. It seems uh, to be a pretty common Peter oh. comment on yes. Uh, it's Keith uh, out on the wet coast here. Um, I find that um, sort of the designation as a track referee in races that don't have blocks is a bit of overkill when uh, we have a lot of events here that are 800s and up. Not a lot, but uh, since we have a distance training center here, um, it seems that a track referee doesn't really have, I mean, a start referee doesn't have much to do uh, when there's no starting blocks because the starter has a bit of a note because if you get a wobbly stance in an 800 or that, they can just deem it an unfair start and right. all go again. But it's, it's, good, uh, it's good to have a referee there in case the starter doesn't quite see it that way. And if it was a wobbly start and the outside person, the referee sees it as a wobbly start, the starter didn't see it that way, then you, you've got a backup, you know, someone who's going to say, look, it, it, it was a wobbly start. We're going to start it over again. No charge. Oh, yeah, Good point, so Peter. At the 2010 Juniors in Moncton, World Juniors, we had a fellow in, I think it was the 3,000 or 5,000, who come from some little country, and this was his big deal, and he was so excited he stepped over the line. <laughs> we just called it a wobbly start and did it again. You're not going to send that guy home. You know, and I think that's where having a start referee right there was good. But I think, like we said, it ideally, even at your provincial championships and, and any meet, it's good to have two referees. I mean, oh, yeah. I think we've all done it where you've been the only referee, but yeah. really it's good to have someone at the finish line and someone at the start line. Now, for a lot of those events, you know, 800 included, that's the same person, but there's a lot of, you know, 15s and 200s and whatever that it's good to have someone at the start and someone at the finish so that you do have eyes on the different parts of the race. Peter, I think that uh, you've got the old wording. I don't have the rule book right in front of me, but my my thoughts are this. Uh, the rule now is a start referee is not necessarily a track referee. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you're right, uh, Ian. Thank you. Yeah. A and uh, uh, certainly, the the and it should be the start referee is the power to decide on the facts. Uh, now, I think with the uh, new addendum or what's coming about in the the new is the uh, uh, you the wording is such that a track referee may be designated as the start referee, but it it it's uh, there's subtle differences here from what. Uh, what this wording is. But uh, Ian, Jill speaking, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in Canada, we decided, uh, you know, all uh, start referees uh, has to be truck referees. Is it possible? Oh, yes, yes. I know it's not the WA rule, but in Canada, we've decided that, right? But, but that's... That's our designation, but in when you look at the in the rule book itself, that it is a uh, start referee is the one that oversees the start, and there's uh, not the mention of that being a track referee per se. But yes, they okay. they certainly so, need to be a referee. If you can <laughs> drop, or I guess I'll help you put this stuff in yeah. the trailer. So there's two situations. One is the stuff international. That we just got. Stuff we just put in the, in the truck. Or I guess it can stay in the truck too. Maybe, maybe <laughs> Louise, you could um, okay. unmute your speaker. Okay, there. then I'll get out of the house, put this in, and um, <laughs> get the other Everyone's truck. getting out. in the truck should mute themselves. <laughs> Louise, put this truck on mute. Okay. Okay, I guess we're ready to go. Now, just so um, you Peter. know, the language that you have. 
in 18.1 is part of the language of 18.1 in the current rule book. So the language is correct. Um, but the, the new language that's going to come effective as of um, November of 2021, and it's, it's more of a, um, a, a language. It, yeah. it used to say a referee appointed uh, or, or the start referee can be a referee appointed to oversee the starts. And that was never the intention. So you're not to pull somebody in from the field to oversee the start. Uh, it now says if a start referee isn't already appointed, then a, a track referee will be appointed to oversee the starts. That sounds good. Mm. They got it right once. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any other uh, comments on start referee before we roll on? Okay, go ahead, Jill. You okay, Peter? Yeah, next. Oh, next one? Sure. Okay. Unless someone has a question. I, I don't think we want to necessarily debate every rule. We've all seen these rules and gone through them any number of times, but if there are some questions and whatever we can get, I think we want to get on to some you know, okay, discussions then. on some other points. This, this is the usual stuff there. Yeah. Normal. So, Jane, you mentioned a real book coming out in the fall. I thought there was a new real book that just came out in January. Am I wrong? I mean, we haven't heard anything from our branch about it. I'm just asking. Um, the, the rule book, the current rule book, I believe, I'll just check it. It's the turquoise one. Um, it came, it, it says 2020 edition. The problem is by the time everybody got the, the printed version, it was well into 2020. Um, there, there are usually rules, um, uh, up, updates midway through a two-year um, session and with the postponement of the olympics this year uh, last year um there were some rules that were changed uh, last fall and summer but most of them were going to take effect in november of 2021 so that the 2020 rule book maintained through the olympics and like the horizontal jumps with breaking of the vertical plane, that's a huge rule change. It will not be in the Olympics. It oh, takes okay. effect in uh, November of 2021. So is that when we would get a new rule book? Well, I, I, I believe World Athletics is moving towards having a virtual rule book. In other words, it'll be on the website and it will be updated um, all the time. Um, and, and hopefully Canada will continue as they have in, in printing a hard copy a rule book um, so that we have something to refer to in print as opposed to on your phones. Thanks for the clarification. Okay, next slide, Joe. Yeah, next one. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's good Sean, eh? I like that. We've covered all the rules. Okay. <laughs> Everybody knows everything they need to know. All right. <laughs> so responsibilities before traveling to the meet. Hmm. You can make your own list and Jill's going to uh, make a list and um, we're also going to have uh, this recorded. So if you want to go back and listen again, can't imagine why, but those who aren't paying attention or aren't um, on Zoom, um, they will be able to listen in and send us their comments later. 
Okay, who wants to start? So David here, maybe the oh, first right. thing is to con confirm your travel arrangements with the local organizing committee. Sounds good. Second one would be to find out who your um, officials are, particularly the other referees and your technical delegate, et cetera. And, and your chief umpire. Well, yeah. And check with a spouse. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm mis misspelling your English. Just tell yeah, me. Yeah, doesn't matter. We're there isn't any. Yeah. We can correct that later, Joe. Yeah. Contact uh, your fellow referees, chief umpire, etc. If you're the track referee, and uh, make sure you know what's going on, what you're going to do. Uh, could you repeat that, please? I haven't. Uh... Uh, the track referee should contact the other track referees, the other referees, uh, particularly the track referees and chief umpire and. Uh, find out who is who, and um, obviously get a list of, of officials, track officials. And I guess you'd need to see the schedule and find out if there are technical meetings that the referees are expected to be present for, which might be earlier than the general officials. Exactly. Technical meetings rather than documents. Oh, meetings, I'm sorry. Yeah. That look good, Peter? Yeah, I, the other thing I would think may possibly you might want to look at things like start lists if they're online nowadays and uh, um, have a bit of an idea what kind of you know, number of heats that you're expecting and if there's going to be any issues with, with that type of thing. Sometimes that's available, sometimes it's not. Yeah. But. So looking at advancements and things, start list and advancements? Well, maybe have an idea of what, what's ahead. You know, like if there's a Canadian championships, for example, is usually pretty flexible. Like sometimes there's heats, sometimes there's semis. It depends on the numbers of entries and whatever. So have a bit of an idea of what, what's coming. Good idea to have that before the technical meeting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The track uh, referees make sure that, you know, if you if you all do the alternate, you know, you're in the inside lanes, out li outside lanes, assignments and stuff. No. 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 To confirm I, that the look at photo the finish guys have done what they're supposed to do. If you see something drastic on a start list that <clears throat> obviously is not seated properly or whatever, you can contact the need organizers and say, hey, what's, you know, or the technical delegate and oh, say, delegate. Yeah. it looks like there's a, an issue here. You know, three guys from the same country are all in the same heat, uh, that kind of So you of would thing. do that when you're reviewing the start list? Yeah. And, and as soon as you get yeah. your list for, um, for a semi or a final, you know, a quick look to make sure that it's kind of makes sense. Yeah, like you know how the advancements go and who, which seeds should have, you know, the centered lanes, etc. And if there's an obvious glitch, you know, have a look. And you can always go and ask. There may be a a rule that's applicable to that meet or something you missed yourself. But if it doesn't look right, it's good to check. And, uh, that would be it. That would be a before, but also a during. Well, yes. for, the, for the first round, you would get that at the technical meeting. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, other things sometimes you can see um, if there's a several time sections and the last one or the first one only has one person in it or something, you could go and suggest that maybe we should split the first two and have five or six runners in an 800 in each section as opposed to having eight and one and one in the other, which isn't really fair to any athlete. 
you know, that type of thing. And because not all meat directors and whatever are knowledgeable of the setting up of events. A lot of them do it by the computer and you know how smart the computer can be sometimes. It does exactly sure. what you tell it to do. Theoretically, that first one will be done before the technical meeting, but often if it isn't, then that's where you can yeah. look, correct? And that, I guess, is something you would look at at the technical meeting as well at some times, where you see some of this stuff and why you should be at the technical meeting you know, for looking for that kind of thing. That's and another thing. All, as a part all of that the... assumes there will be a technical meeting right. because Athletics Canada does not have technical meetings any longer for right. their national championships. Mm -hmm. They should. <laughs> yeah. And, and some of the smaller meets, like your provincial meets, you probably don't have a technical meeting, but if you talk to the meet organizers, you can probably get start lists or at least some information on you know, what, what's coming, how many heats to expect, that kind of thing. Now with the deadline for entries and the computer ability, we usually see that ahead of time, which is really nice. Yeah. Pat March here from um, Alberta, um, s s relatively new to the uh, idea of refer track referee, but um, one of the things I've always been told was to make sure that you know the technical details and the type of meat that's being run. Uh, are we dealing with masters? Are we dealing with varsity rules? To make sure one is familiar with all of those kinds of things prior to uh, coming. Absolutely. One thing you uh, will realize that sometimes the easiest event to be a referee at is Canadian Championships or or the Worlds. <laughs> exactly. The That's rules true. are black and white. You know, the Worlds are black and white. When you're getting to um, some of your provincial meets, especially if it's not the championships, you have to talk to the organizers and find out what they want you to do. Do they want every kid who steps on the line wants to be disqualified? You know, that kind of thing. You, you have to have a philosophy before you start and some common sense. And there's certainly lots of ways of dealing with that. I know indoors, we've kind of had the um, if two, if only one umpire reports it, yeah, maybe we won't disqualify. We don't have videos to go back and look like you do at the Worlds, where you can see that one step on the line. You've got to make some decisions on your own, and it's sometimes, right, Peter? What's that? It's called compassion. Yeah, sometimes uh, what we've been doing, I know Helen and I do it a bit. You call the athlete over. And you say, you know what? I've got a report here. It says you ran on the line. And um, what do you think? Well, I didn't know I did that. Well, be very careful next time. We're not going to disqualify you this time. Exactly. However, if the athlete gets really mouthy and whatever, you'll say, well, I'm sorry. I, you're disqualified this time. You know, you can deal with it as you see fit, but there's certainly more than black and white when you're dealing with that yeah. level. We use that, we use that often in Quebec. Yeah, mm -hmm. you kind of have to look at what level the meet's at. Yeah. You're probably a little tougher on a, a provincial championship, but when they're running the pre early season meets and the trials and the qualifiers and all those things, you don't have to be as tough as normal. Particularly, I have found in, uh, in heats, you know, if you have a, a kid of 10 years old who just put his foot around the edge of the hurdle. You go and you say, you know, we think that you put your foot around the side of the hurdle and uh, we won't disqualify you now, but if you do that in the final, you will be disqualified. And then it gives them a chance. Yeah. And then that's what I was saying before. It's the only event really in track where we're subjective. You know, most of the other things, it's, it's pretty black and white. Your time's your time, your, uh, your long jumps, your long jump, it's measured, it's, it's there. There's not a whole lot of discretion, you know, you're good or bad, but here we do have some room for 
compassion. Until you get yeah. to the higher meets and they've got videos and then we don't have to worry. Right. <laughs> and the international governing bodies expect you to call everything. As chintzy as it may seem to us, sometimes it's they're technically right there all the time with the videos now. So, Of course, one of the problems for us is when we first become track referees, we are refereeing these smaller meets and these uh, below provincial level where you actually need to use that subjectiveness a lot more than if you are, you know, we're not at the level where we're getting to do championships that where it's more black and white. So it's even more important that, you know, you sort of feel that you're running a fair, a fair meet, even at that level. But some of the coaches and parents are every bit as emotional and high strung as the uh, people at the Olympic level. So, yeah. And I, I also think this is David here. I also think that you need to uh, check in advance as to how strict you're going to be on the rules based on the meat itself, because there are some areas where it isn't subjective and some areas in the rule book where it's very prescriptive. In other words, mm -hmm. if an athlete does this, he shall be disqualified. Shall be, yes. Versus maybe. Yeah. And the other point you made is, is consistency. You know, if you're doing that level meet, you kind of got to be consistent. You can't be really tough on, you know, one section because they're the fast kids and not tough on the slow kids and vice versa. You know, you, maybe the age group, you'll treat them differently. We, you know, the little guys, you might be more lenient than with 17 year olds, but you want to treat all the 17 year olds the same. Okay, anything else on uh, stuff before the meet or we got a little bit sidetracked, which is good. Uh, uh, hi, Peter, Told to finally go join in. Um, on the, what you just described as far as uh, trying to get, uh, uh, to, to be consistent, yes, but when, at the start of the meeting, is there a way to talk to when you have basically uh, mainly on the junior or the, the young start of the of the kids that are quite young, to give them uh, some kind of a coaching approach that uh, you're not there to disqualify them, but to help them follow the rules and, and not necessarily pull pull them out because they've done a, a minor a minor mistake. Yeah, you could. I, I would tend not to myself in that you're kind of opening yourself up now for that situation. Mm -hmm. I think it's almost better to deal it, deal with it as you go. It's and the other thing up. is that if you do that, then you're letting them think that if they transgress this time, they can do it again next time. Right. So it's, it's more to apply it than, than tell them up front that you will be uh, not yeah. as strict, let's say. <laughs> I, I think one of the biggest things that happened in, in my uh, career almost <laughs> was a couple of years ago. Me, well, I was guess more than a couple of years ago now. But the Canadian team that got DQ'd on TV for stepping on the line once mm -hmm. that did more for referees in Canada than anything had in ten years previous, because all of a sudden the whole country knew that stepping on the line got you disqualified. It wasn't oh, we only stepped on it once. No, you stepped on it, you're disqualified. You step on the line in basketball, it's out of bounds. You know, like it's people understand that rule, but when it's not, uh, you know, trans translated that way, it, it people think that you can't uh, disqualify if it's only one step on the line. Well, you can. Yeah. We can bend it a little bit on an individual basis, as you know, Alice and I were saying. You know, you can show some compassion, or you can, you know, talk to the person and try to educate, but you don't want to let the general public know that you're prepared to do that. The rules are the rules. And you certainly can't do it when you get to the international level. <laughs> no. no. That was my other side of that is Keith. Well, this is Keith again. That the other side of that coin uh, about, you know, using discretion and sometimes letting it go. Sometimes kids are, well, young people are better to be disqualified when it's not a significant disqualification, it might be in a 
uh, well, we have a, we normally run a high school league and those kinds of things. And if they, it, that becomes a learning experience that, oh, I better not do that. I just found out there's a rule about that. And But if they weren't disqualified, they may then get disqualified at a, at a much more uh, special meet, like a provincial championship or something. So it's tough to weigh both sides of it. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good point. I think each person has to kind of weigh that themselves and learn how to deal with it and, and um, set your own guidelines. And if it's working for you and you're, you know, having success with what you're doing, then it's good. And uh, if you're having a lot of controversy and whatever, then maybe what you're doing isn't good. And uh, anyways, how's the next slide looking? Oh, responsibilities during the meet. Well, this is a long one. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, pre-meet, just, <laughs> okay. Pre All right, yeah. so we've seen before we get there, pre-meet, we've talked to some of those already. Um, the technical meeting stuff, uh, you know, looking at the uh, heat sheets, etc. cetera. Um, what else we have? Uh, Peter, it's Helen. Hey. I, I would probably walk the track, even if it's a track that you're very familiar with, uh, you don't know what's on the other side. Um, take notice of the uh, water jump, inside or outside. Um, make sure curbing's in, things like that. But it's definitely good to walk every track. Yeah. And yeah. particularly with the other people you're working with, Helen, correct? Yes, definitely. That was my other mentor, Danielle Michaud, who beat that into my head. So. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, for sure. You, you have to know where the start lines are. Um, are there 150s on the race? Do they have start lines for a 150? That kind of thing. And you may have to go to the technical manager and say, hey, we don't have start lines for this Bantam 150 they're running. And they'll go out and set them up. You might have to help. And, and look at the 3000s where you've got 30 entries and is somebody set up to do the waterfall? <laughs> you have to think about that ahead because guaranteed somewhere during the meet, someone's going to come to you and ask you which water, which hurdles are going to be out for the steeplechase. Yeah. Right. And you're the one who's supposed to have the answer. So yeah. think of it ahead of time rather than, oh, I got to get the rule book and count and whatever. You know, if you can, if you know it's coming up that day, make sure you've got an answer and you can look so much smarter. <laughs> I think it's important. Yeah, I've been the other side too. It's okay. <laughs> organizers about where practicing is permitted. I know that an indoor meet, sometimes there's quite a bit of chaos because uh, uh, practicing on the back stretch and uh, on occasion, there have been some very difficult situations arising. Right. Is it in this section that it also look at who's to help Overall, the team uh, with uh, if you have hurdles, who's to who's to put them in place, and who's to manage all the, all the accessories, equipment, so to speak, uh, associated with the, the starting blocks, uh, things like that. Know your technical manager and meet with them. Yeah, and and following on what Alice just said, it's really uh, establishing your communications protocols with all of the other people, like photo finish. Photo finish, like, yeah like the call room, like um, the start assistant, starter's assistant. So just being aware of what the protocols are. Where's your paperwork coming from? Right. Paper where's flow. it going to? <laughs> and where's it going to, exactly? You've got your paper flow. Yeah. Uh, also your protest, radio communications, and um, I think it's doping. Doping control? Yeah. The doping control people are really good. They usually come to the track restaurant yeah. before the meet and say, I'm so-and-so, and you will be seeing some of our people. They're wearing this color armband. And they're, I have found them really very good to work with. Yeah, very good, yeah. You're going to have medical people come and talk to you. You're going to have 
um, press people come and talk and you kind of have to have some answers as to how they're being dealt with. <laughs> now, some of the big meets will have that all organized and they'll be mm. wearing special shirts or bibs or something. But if they're not, you're the person they're going to ask. And part of D is probably also if you have a, some protest or a, a, some, some, a report of some kind to be able to stop the results to go out because typically, quite often on meets, the track referee is, will be not as involved as two years ago where photo finish seems to have his, his quick way of sending result out without necessarily being stopped if there was a protest of some kind to be established. That's one of your pre-meet communications with your photo finish people. Yeah. Tell them they can't release results till you tell them they can. We don't pay any attention to the track referee. <laughs> oh, David, Peter, she's out. <laughs> we knew that, but we didn't have to say it. <laughs> you know. So the communication is both the radio or whatever we're using and paper flow, right? But, yeah. Yes. Okay. Whatever. The Mostly radio now, I think. Yeah, radio. Yeah. Peter, I don't know if this I don't know if this is a pre-meet responsibility or whether it's during the meet, but I really appreciated you in Moncton when a race had to be rerun. So as a starts referee, I asked asked put it to you because you're the track referee. Meanwhile, an international official came out of the stands and was telling everybody when it was going to be rerun. <laughs> and you came up to him and very politely but very firmly said, I am the track referee. I and the meet director will determine when the race is going to be rerun. <laughs> and a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> I thought it was just super. <laughs> Dennis, we had a few incidences, as Peter knows, in Moncton. <laughs> yes, more than a few. Well, I thought Peter handled it so well. Yes. He could have stepped back and let the guy have his wishes, but oh, he, no. he handled it exactly. Oh, he handled it pricelessly. <laughs> It was very well done. Uh, I'd been practicing with uh, Eric Savard, so I was okay. Eric <laughs> Savard. <laughs> wow. Uh, there's, a, there's a name for you, right? Yeah. David was oh. there too, right, David? <laughs> but I think yeah. it's important that people know that if a race is to be rerun, the track referee and the meet director will determine when that race is going to be rerun. Nobody else. Right. A, that it's going to be rerun, and B, when. You're correct, Dennis. Yeah. That's right. Technically, the referee's in charge of all that, as they are if there's going to be a suspension of the uh, races because of, you know, lightning or whatever. Sure, yeah. But, but you should always be talking to the meet director as well. They kind of think that they're in charge, so <laughs> you have to communicate with them to... <laughs> You know, it's Come amazing, but there's not many people. You know. There's not many people who know who is in charge when it comes to no, those and, situations. And then there's always the television people that are having the <laughs> input as well. So, yeah, well, there's a lot, of, a lot of factors at those kind of meets. But basically, at a smaller meet, you're the person in charge. And if television you, is not in charge. Safe, it's not a safe. You, know. you can't forget the technical delegate who often thinks he's in charge. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we had one of those. I tend to forget the technical delegate, as you just noticed. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Peter, uh, Jill speaking. Uh, I yes. don't know if you noticed that, but I added the uh, another point. Introduce yourself to meet organizer. Yes. Right yeah. All right. Yeah, especially and, at. Uh, uh, well, I make guess sure that there is a wind gauge in operation. Ah. There's That's a, a technical manager that you talk to about those things. Yeah. And then through and the finish. Or so it we lots of talking to do with photo finish and the technical manager. For yeah. Sure. Wind yeah. gauge display clocks at, at the splits. Cones. Is that all technical manager? Yeah. 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 Basically, and sometimes yeah, they can do it. it. Sometimes they all get stuff ready for you to do. I think Alice is right. The track referee is responsible to make sure it happens, but it may be the technical manager or it may be photo finish that activates it. Yeah. Right, right. 
Track referees are a, a, a jack of all trades where you have to coordinate with everybody and, and they all come at you when things don't go right and you have to have answers for them, right? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. How about advertising boards? We would have to move, sometimes we had to move them a bit. Yeah. That's, that's things that the uh, meat organizers may speak to you about. And, yeah. and uh, some of you will remember meeting with Eric Savard in Moncton for several <laughs> meetings before and having all these debates in about four meetings before the meet even came about. That was months before. And those items all came up. And, uh, and then we got there and the boards around the end by the um, steeplechase water jump were top to bottom from the fence and the umpires were not allowed inside and they were mm -hmm. outside. And there were a couple of little small ones who- at Yes. The <laughs> <little schools laughs> I remember. <laughs> Unbelievable, and he, and he could have cared less. <laughs> no. no, he didn't, he didn't. So but he you have done. to be creative and come up with ways to communicate and get paperwork around and whatever, and that's where having good umpires and whatever is a, a great benefit. So always treat the umpires very well. <laughs> and sometimes you have to know how to get around things you're told not to do in order to be able to look after your umpires and do that. Yes. <laughs> so was that that's a pre re, that would be a pre beat finding out um, where you're where you're allowed to be and access what access you have. Yeah, but very yes. close pre meet because um, you can't okay. do it till you're there. Okay. Yeah. Again, um, one of the things that what the lower end meets that certainly uh, the track referee is out to make sure is uh, setting out of hurdles. And there's some cases where you have combined age groups in hurdles and you've got different levels, different lanes. And I don't know how many times if it hadn't been for the track referee coming down to check everything because the people thought they'd sit everything out correctly and they didn't yeah. even have enough hurdles out or they weren't in the right spots, the right heights. Right. They're theoretically responsible, but you're the one that um, gets the heck if it isn't done correctly. So. Yeah, and of course at the small yeah. meets you time, sometimes don't have a technical director. Mm -hmm. So as track referee, if you're not the one looking out for it, then sometimes nobody else seems to really yeah. know. Some of the hurdle crews are really well trained, but they're not putting the hurdles in the right place. <laughs> 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 no, I, like they're off by two inches depending on the type of hurdles because it's, exactly. it's the yeah. front of the hurdle is with the front of the line. And some of the hurdles have bends in them and whatever, and they put the base on the line, but the top of the hurdle is not in the right place. Right. Well, the hurdle right. crew is doing a really good job and they're all there and then you say, but they're all two inches off of where they should be. Oh, well, no, that's what the boss told me. Well, and then you have to find the boss and sort that out, so. Tell them that you're the boss's boss. <laughs> it's not the boss's boss, but. You have to talk to the boss because usually the hurdle crew it's isn't going to listen to anybody else. Yeah, it's on Facebook, on Messenger. And it can really set people off, even two inches. Yeah. In a hurdle race. Yeah. In Toronto, we do a lot of master's meets and the hurdles quite often. Um, we have multiple age groups and multiple hurdle settings and it can be a real um, mess. And yeah. you really somebody who knows what they're doing and we usually it's a piece of paper you have a piece of paper as you walk down and you know lane two is 65 lane three is 80 and you've got to work through who gets what hurdle yeah and we have meets that have bantams and others yeah. little groups plus masters and they all have something different yeah so it's a, a nightmare well, Jill, it's um, eight o'clock, I see. I don't yeah. didn't want to go more than an hour. I'm not sure how people feel or if they're having such a good time, they don't want to leave. But, um, <laughs> the gin could... whistle just went. <laughs> What's that? The gin whistle just went. It's five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> five o'clock in your place. It's yeah. five o'clock somewhere. 
Oh, <laughs> yeah. what, what kind yeah. of track referee are, am I? I'm, I'm not on schedule now. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. I think this has been really useful, but it would be a good idea maybe to stop and see what we've done and then do it again. Yes, we can start look for the one? responsibilities during the meet for next one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Start with hurdle placement. It's already come up. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Hurdle, pl hurdle placement is hurdle the first placement. item A. Oh, don't, don't get into that. I don't even want to think about it. But uh, yeah, so we're thinking, as uh, Jill and I were thinking of um, something like once a month. Does that sound too Sounds soon good. or not yeah. soon enough? That's a good, good. That's a good yeah, that's idea. good. We're, we're thinking a lot of the officials might be listening in on some of the other event uh, discussions as well. So if they're in multiple yeah. events and you know doing uh, some things with starters and whomever, that if combined events they might picture. be doing you know other things. So. We don't want to be every week because I'm sure you've got other ones to listen to. So we're thinking in about a month's time. Yeah. yeah. So Sounds the good. Was, David, was, did you put that picture up? No, that's me. That's Jill. No, no okay. I didn't. David Hawkins. You know where it's from? No. It's from BC, that's from right. Victoria. Is that Anne? Yeah, yeah it looks Anne. like Anne, yeah. And Louise oh, and Dave Hopkins and Steve Martin. Oh. And that's there that's dave hopkins yeah oh, we couldn't find any of ontario fishes and steve like martin on the left <laughs> no that uh, brian hawksworth oh you're right okay. peter, peter is that comment part of your diplomacy <laughs> <laughs> next time we'll we'll find one from quebec just to, to make sure there's no prejudice. yeah find one from moncton oh wow that's That'd when we nice. were young all right well Thank you very much, everyone. I, it was kind of fun, and um, we'll look forward to seeing you again. Is uh, Wednesday a reasonable night? I guess the people that are here aren't going to say anything because they're here. Yeah. People that aren't here would be objecting. Tuesday or Wednesday was good for me. Yep. Hopefully next time there won't be as many people that are uh, on witness protection and we can see their face. <laughs> and, uh... Can we try ju Wednesday, July 14th? No. Okay, no. You, you just made it up. So no. I, would, I would propose the end of a July in about end of a, July. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, get there. So 14, 20, 21. 21. How's 21 sound? We'll compromise. Yeah, 21 of July. Yeah. July. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to get there. Oh. AOS has their strategic planning, and it's a very long Wednesday oh, evening. Wow. So, but I can listen at another time because Gilles going to record this. Yeah. All right. Okay. So tentatively, we'll look at the 21st of uh, July and we'll see you all again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you. you. Thank see you. Next time. Bye bye. See you again. Hello to everybody and goodbye to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> stay on for a minute. Stay on. There's Thank Ellen. You. Hi, Ellen. <laughs> well, so people.